Tomás de Torquemada was the controlling force of the Spanish Inquisition. He presided over the systematic purging of the so-called heretic Jews that has gone down in history as one of the worst religious persecutions of all time. But was he the monster that history has painted? Well, in this week's biographics, we uncover the real story of Tomás de Torquemada. Tomás de Torquemada was born in 1420 in or around the village of Valladolid in the kingdom of Old Castile in modern-day Spain. The Torquemadas were of Jewish heritage. However, Tomás's forebears had converted to Catholicism to become what were known as conversos or converted ones. His was a distinguished family with an uncle John who had joined the Dominican order and was making advancement in the royal palace in Rome. In 1431, John de Torquemada was made master of the palace and then, in 1439, a cardinal. With an uncle in such a high position in the Catholic Church, the path was set for young Tomas to make his own mark within the church. From a young age, he seized the opportunity. He was a diligent student who developed a reputation as a pious and humble young man. Prior to the age of 10, he was admitted to the San Pablo Dominican Monastery. For the next two decades, his life revolved around ecclesiastical study, prayer, confession, and church custom. At around the age of 35, he became prior of the Dominican convent at Segovia. For the next 20 years, Torquemada presided over his small parish, living the life of a humble, quiet man of God. He developed a reputation as an energetic and fearless preacher of the word and a strict disciplinarian. The fact that he was strictest on himself caused the people in his community to look at his as a fine example of piety and holiness. He refused to eat meat, he slept on a bare board, and would not wear anything other than his old habit. He was also a voracious reader and had a fascination with architecture, especially that of the church. Up until the 15th century, the rulers of Castile and Aragon governed a series of separate district kingdoms within the Iberian Peninsula. It was the marriage of Isabel of Castile to Ferdinand of Aragon in 1469 which began the gradual process of unification that would lead to the creation of modern-day Spain. It was around 1470 when Torquemada became acquainted with Princess Isabella, who was then in her young 20s. The princess was spending quite a lot of time in Segovia and with Tor Torquemada, having established quite a reputation as a holy man of note, he was retained as her confessor. At first, he declined to accept the offer, but was won over by the princess's insistence. On December 13, 1474, Isabella was crowned Queen of Castile and Lyon. Her relationship with Torquemada had grown, and she came to rely on him for advice. Isabella and Torquemada, they were both obsessed with rooting out religious heresy and the purity of the church. Both the queen and her husband, King Ferdinand, had a high opinion of the humble priest, and he was quickly promoted within the order. If he had been ambitious, he may have ascended to a cardinalship like his uncle, or even to the office of pope. But Torquemada, he had no such lofty intentions. He was content to live the life of a simple monk. In May of 1475, the Portuguese invaded Spain in an attempt to seize the crown away from Isabella and Ferdinand. A bloody war was waged for nearly a year, culminating in the Spanish victory at the Battle of Toro on March 1, 1476. In the wake of this great victory, Isabella rode around the countryside, holding court in every town that she came across. There, she would hear complaints about murderers, thieves, and other wrongdoers. Using her authority as monarch to fast-track judicial process, she would order the guilty to either be shot or beheaded immediately. This she did with a cold and clinical precision. At this time, Torquemada was busy with organizing the construction of a new Dominican monastery at Avila. Jews had been living in Spain for some 1,500 years, with about 80,000 of them at the time Isabella was queen. This was compared to some 6 million Christians. Unlike France and England, the Spanish had not expelled the Jews, but they had forced many of them to convert to Christianity. These were the ones who were known as conversos. Many within the realm, however, did not put any stock in the Christian sincerity of the conversos. They were believed to be false converts who practiced their own Jewish religion while professing Christianity. This was seen by many in positions of power as a direct threat to the security of the realm in general and the church in particular. 
In the eyes of the queen, this faith amounted to heresy, and it was something that she simply would not tolerate. In fact, she would not put up with any form of religious hypocrisy. It was during a visit to Seville in 1477 that she first became interested in adopting an inquisition or investigation into the religious state of the kingdom. The following year, a papal bull was issued by Pope Sixtus IV, granting permission to establish an inquisition within Castile. The petition to the Pope requesting the inquisition had been written by Torquemada and Cardinal Mendoza. But Isabella, she moved cautiously. She was of the opinion that poor training was the main reason that Jewish converts were not fully adhering to the faith, and so she put the emphasis on religious education. The Queen appointed two of her most trusted church advisors, Cardinal Mendoza and the future Archbishop of Granada, Hernando de Tavara, to the task of re-educating the wayward converso. A program was put in place in Seville by which local priests would retrain the misguided conversos. But after two years with very little headway being made, Isabella had to concede that stronger measures were needed. She remained reluctant to enact the Inquisition, but pressure came upon her from her advisers, including Torquemada, to do so. Even her husband, King Ferdinand, was in favor. Ever the pragmatist, he foresaw the confiscation of converso property as a much-needed revenue-gathering source for the state. Finally, and against her better judgment, Isabella issued a royal decree on September 27, 1480, establishing the Tribunal of the Holy Office of the Inquisition. The papal bull authorizing the Inquisition had given Isabella and Ferdinand the freedom to select the members who made up the Inquisition Tribunal. They chose Tomás de Torquemada, along with Cardinal Mendoza, and two other Dominicans, Fray Miguel Marillo and Fray Juan de San Martín. Mendoza took the position of chief judge, while Torquemada took the position of consulting expert. The other two members were the active inquisitors who sought out and brought heretics before the tribunal. The first area of focus for the inquisition was the almost entirely Jewish city of Seville. The arrival of inquisitors dressed in distinctive white robes and black hoods caused panic among the converso community, with around 4,000 people fleeing Seville. Still, the Inquisitors set about their work with ruthless efficiency. The first public execution took place on February 6, 1481. On that day, six people were burned to death, setting the stage for the horror that was to unfold over the coming months and years. From Seville, the Inquisition spread throughout the kingdom, with tribunals set up in Cordoba, Yen, and the religious capital of Toledo. A pattern was soon established that would begin with the people of a town being prepared by having the fear of God preached to them from the pulpit. Then the Inquisitors would arrive in the town, and the Edict of Grace would be read. This was a call to come forth and confess your lack of faith. Those who did so and renounced their Judaism could hope for mercy. Those who didn't would face the full wrath of the Inquisitors. Those who were taken into detention would have all of their property taken away from them. This would obviously leave their family in a hopeless situation. The primary goal of the interrogators was to obtain a confession. It didn't matter if it came voluntary or if torture had to be used to extract it. Methods of torture progressed from foot roasting, in which the suspect's feet were lathered in fat and then held over a burning fire, to the Judas Cradle, a device composed of a tall, thin stool with a triangular-shaped seat in which the victim was slowly impaled, and then there was the rack, in which case the victim was tied to a wooden frame and their body was stretched as the bars moved in opposite directions. Such torture would convince even the most innocent of people to confess. Still, such a coerced confession was not legally binding. It had to be afterwards confirmed by the suspect for it to hold any weight. The trial that was held would be the defendant's only opportunity to defend himself. If he was able to, he would call upon witnesses to prove his innocence or to cast doubt upon the veracity of the accuser. If found guilty, the person could be reconciled or penanced if they demonstrated contriteness. They would lose all their property and have to undergo such punishments as whipping or a term of imprisonment. Those who refused to denounce Judaism would be condemned to the flames. The Inquisition created an atmosphere of fear throughout the kingdom. One of its most chilling aspects was that it thrived on a diet of anonymous accusation. Then, when a suspect was forced to confess, he was required to produce names of others who had been co-conspirators with him. 
By 1483, the Inquisition had become a monster that was completely out of control. Isabella's initial goal was simply to weed out the false converts among the Converso Jews, but the climate of accusation and torture had led to something far, far more sinister. With no centralized control, the various tribunals around the kingdom were operating according to their own dictates. News was constantly being received by the Pope in Rome of excesses that went beyond the powers that he had given in his papal bull. This caused tension between the Pope and Queen Isabella. In order to settle the situation, Isabella turned to her advisor, Thomas de Torquemada. It was decided that all the powers of the Inquisition would be decentralized with Torquemada himself at the head. He had the skills and experience, it was believed, to please both the monarch and the Pope at the same time. The Pope agreed, and in October of 1483, he named Torquemada the Inquisitor General of Castile and Leon. In contrast to histories painting him as an eager persecutor of Jews who was chomping at the bit to torture them, the truth is that Torquemada would rather not have taken up the position. He would have preferred to continue to live the simple life of a monk. Yet, having accepted the position, he did take it on with full force. Not with the goal of persecuting the Jews, though, but ensuring that all Catholics were true and loyal Catholics. He saw the Inquisition not as an instrument of cruel terror, but as a vehicle for necessary reform. Torquemada began his oversight of the Inquisition by doing away with the worst excesses of his predecessors, putting in place a system of judicial process. He then improved the conditions for people who were imprisoned under the Inquisition. Torquemada next set about refining the stages of the Inquisition process. The Edict of Grace would be read up to three times and a period of 40 days given for repentant ones to come forward. A person could only be convicted on the testimony of two witnesses, and now the complaints had to be in writing and they had to be signed. Once a person was denounced by two witnesses, he would be investigated, usually without his knowledge. If evidence of false religious worship was clear, certain, and specific, the person would be put before the court. Torquemada required that a person's trial must be held within three days of his arrest. The charges against him would be stated, and he would be urged to confess to his guilt. If he refused, up to two more hearings would be held. Only after the third hearing would the interrogation begin. Torquemada produced a handbook to help his inquisitors to identify heretical conversos. Giveaway signs of their heresy were such things as cooking all their meals for the weekend on a Friday night, if they got their supplies from Jewish rather than Christian suppliers, and if they were known not to eat pork. Despite the fact that his name has been forever linked with the worst excesses of the Inquisition's torture processes, the reality is that Torquemada was responsible for mitigating the worst excesses of the process. He stipulated that it was not to be used as a means of punishment, but strictly for obtaining information related to the charge at hand. Furthermore, torture could only be administered with the written approval of the Bishop of the Diocese and the Visa of the Supreme Court. In addition, a doctor had to be present throughout the torture process. Torquemada did away with some of the more barbarous methods of torture and replaced them with what was known as the water cure. The interrogated person would be stripped naked and tied with cords upon a wooden ladder. The nostrils were stopped and his jaws were held apart by tongues. Then a piece of linen was placed over his mouth. Water was then slowly poured onto the cloth to travel down the throat. The sensation that resulted was that one was suffocating. However, it rarely resulted in long-term harm and usually resulted in a confession being obtained. Torquemada organized a synod of inquisitors at Seville, during which he impressed upon the tribunal members his new rules. He then convened tribunals in all Jewish strongholds, including Seville, Cordoba, Gion, and Ciudad Real. With the Inquisition now ironed out in Castile, Torquemada now set about implementing it in Aragon. This was a challenging assignment. The Jews held plenty of positions of power, and these men were naturally resistant to the Inquisition moving in. The governor of Aragon, along with most of the judges and lawyers in the state, were all conversos. They all banded together in opposition to the work of Torquemada. Still, the chief inquisitor forged ahead. He appointed two of his best men as inquisitors for Aragon. Leaving his men to it, he then returned to focus on carrying out the Inquisition in Castile. Meanwhile, Jewish leaders in both states were organizing an opposition to the Inquisition. A great campaign for democracy was launched. 
Two monks were sent to Cordoba to beseech the queen to put an end to the Inquisition. The men offered large sums of money to the crown. However, Isabella rejected all of their efforts. Now desperate, the Jewish leaders began to speak of assassinating the Inquisitors. A group of prominent Jews met together and agreed to hire a gang of cutthroats to carry out the assassinations. They began by disposing of high-ranking priests within the Inquisition. Father Peter Abuse was kneeling in prayer before the Blessed Sacrament when a gangster crept in and stabbed him in the back. The king and queen were outraged at this attack and went all out to hunt down the people who were responsible. The gang, who had been employed to carry out the killings, they were rounded up and executed. Meanwhile, the death of the priest, who had immediately been raised to sainthood, led to a backlash against the converso. Any opposition to the Inquisition in Aragon now came to an end, allowing Torquemada free reign to bring the Jews there to his true faith. In the course of his inquiries into the Jewish activities, Torquemada uncovered a plot by Converso leaders in Toledo to seize control of the city during the 1485 Corpus Christi prosecution and murder all the leading Christians. As a result, a large number of Jewish leaders were put to death. After 12 years, the Inquisition had still not managed to stomp out the Jewish heresy problem. Torquemada was of the belief that the reason that the conversos were not fully engaged with Catholicism was because they still associated with the Jewish community. Only by putting an end to this association would the problem be solved. Consequently, he began putting pressure on the king and queen to issue an edict expelling all Jews from Spain. Then, in 1490, five Jews and six conversos were accused of crucifying and murdering a Christian child in the village of Lagardia. The accusation it was probably false, but it led to an unprecedented anti-Semitic backlash. Finally, in March of 1492, Isabella and Ferdinand signed their names to a document which ordered that all Jews who had not converted to Christianity were to leave the kingdom by August 2, 1492. Around 160,000 people managed to get out before the deadline. Most of them sold their possessions for a pittance and were forced to travel as far as Africa, the Balkans, and Rome before finally finding a place to settle. Many of them, unable to find a place where they would be accepted, straggled back to Spain to be baptized as Catholics. Others reportedly paid exorbitant prices for passage on ships only to be killed at sea and thrown overboard. The number of Jews who remained in Spain as conversos was far greater than those who had left. And despite the worst efforts of the Inquisition, they remained Jewish believers at heart. However, these conversos now had no Jewish cultural support to back them up. They were completely on their own. Synagogues throughout the land were taken over and claimed for the Catholic Church. By now, Torquemada was at the height of his power. He had unfettered control over the Inquisition and was a key player in the royal household. The combination of the Inquisition and the Jewish expulsion had ensured that Catholicism would remain untainted. In 1494, Torquemada, now aged 74, began to suffer the effects of old age. His body lacked the energy he once had, and he struggled to complete his duties as Grand Inquisitor. Pope Gregory IV appointed four assistant inquisitors to lighten the load. In that same year, Isabella and Ferdinand gifted him the Jewish cemetery at Avila for him to use as his own monastery. It was here that he died peacefully on September 16, 1498. The Inquisition was to survive Torquemada by 300 years, spreading throughout the Spanish-held territory, including Naples, the Spanish Netherlands, and the territory held by Spain and the Americas. The Inquisition remains one of the worst examples of man's inhumanity towards man, and the man who led it, Tomás de Torquemada, is one of history's most hated figures. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below. Don't forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos twice a week. Also hit that notification bell if you actually want to hear about those videos. Subscribe doesn't do what it used to on YouTube. And as always, thank you for watching.